。二零二一年十月，四十九件来自大英博物馆的达芬奇、米开朗基罗、拉斐尔、提香等文艺复兴巨匠珍贵的非公开纸上绘画，漂洋过海来到北京展出，让中国观众一窥天才们创作背后的故事和秘密，并与中国当代艺术家的作品展开对话。This is a really rare opportunity to see these drawings. Due to the fragility of these sheets of paper, can only be seen for 12 months every 10 years. These are drawings, not really meant to be shown publicly. Kind of trade secrets. Some artists did destroy a lot of their drawings. There's a rarity. It was like having access to someone's diary, showing you that even the genius we're studying. 展览从六个方面。揭秘了大师们是如何让一个个场景跃出纸张，历经五百多年依旧栩栩如生。The exhibition begins with storytelling because they're essentially storytellers. 不可错过的展品之一是米开朗基罗的天使报喜。You can tell the Virgin Mary has actually been moved several times, like it's animated. 一旁。是在梵蒂冈著名的拉斐尔房间中的壁画《诗坛》的人物研究手稿。这一房间被称为是拉斐尔艺术创造力登峰造极之作。人体展厅被设计成一个开放式的古罗马神殿，文艺复兴时期强调人体写生的练习。It's really where you start to see poses coming into play。展厅里。两幅达芬奇的夸张画人物肖像很有意思，是当时的一种宫廷娱乐。Leonardo was fascinated by physiognomy. He would often go walking around the streets with his sketchbook, follow people who had interesting faces, and make studies. This drawing is incredibly minute, almost as if he was using a needle. 达芬奇的老对手米开朗基罗占据了展厅的中心位置。这是他为雕塑胜利者进行的躯干研究。The way that he indicates the muscles moving under the skin is quite remarkable. It's a fantastic example of his work as an anatomist. 米开朗基罗对自己的创作格外保密，甚至曾为此在四周架起帐篷住在里面。而一批年轻艺术家则挤破脑袋想要学习他的作品，拉斐尔就是其中之一。据说。两人同在梵蒂冈为教皇创作时，拉斐尔曾偷偷溜进去看米开朗基罗还未完成的画作，然后回去修改自己的雅典学院。这令米开朗基罗非常愤怒。在运动部分展出的《赫拉克勒斯与半人马》中，我们不难看到米开朗基罗对拉斐尔的影响。He adopted how he could portray the movement of flesh and weight. The positioning of the body to emphasize an action that's about to take place. The other way of representing movement is to use drapery. Fine clothes is very, very important in Renaissance Italy because that shows the wealth and the status. You can see that the drawing is focused exclusively on her dress. Her face doesn't matter so much. 与此同时，贵族们开始痴迷于异域服装。This comes to fruition in the 16th century with costume books, things of all countries in Europe and beyond. 除此之外，上流阶级也对来自异国的动物产生了极大的兴趣。Exotic animals was another sign of status, and became really favored diplomatic gifts. 达芬奇曾说，光影的交错组成了我们所看见的所有物体的形态。在后辈提香看来。光影的作用不止于此。这是提香的成名作《圣母升天》的手稿。Titian uses light to suggest divine radiance. His face is bathed in this light, which suggests his awe and astonishment at what's happening. 展览中，中国当代艺术家的创作与之呼应，有刘晓东的绘画，呼应圣乔治关于善与恶的讨论。看轩延续贝利尼对于光的探索。I would hope that people go away with a new appreciation for Renaissance art, for its delicacy, its liveliness, its inventiveness, and not just as some quaint historical piece. That there is, in fact, this continuing conversation.